Uh, hello, happy Friday and uh, welcome to Grenada Reports, live with the latest across the Northwest. Hello there. On the programme this evening. Scorchio. The region roasts on the hottest day of the year, but tonight a warning over the dangers of skin cancer as sun cream is handed out to thousands of children. After a very warm day today, a fresher weekend, but that doesn't necessarily mean a lower UV sunburn risk. All the detail a little later on. The need for speed. How cutting-edge technology for fighter pilots is being trialled in the skies above Lancashire. Happy birthday to you. Celebrating with a little help from his friends, Liverpool comes together to wish a happy 80th birthday to Sir Paul McCartney. Introducing the K's, we meet the Earlstown four-piece tip for greatness who will never forget their roots. And I'm in Liverpool where we're celebrating another legend this evening. But who is behind this black curtain? I'll give you a clue. He's a man and he's a star or even a star man. So uh, stay tuned. All will be revealed. Uh, well, first this evening, I'm sure it is all you've been talking about today, whether you've been out enjoying it or stuck inside like us, mm -hmm. wishing that you were outside. Working really hard. Yes, it is, of course, the glorious weather. It's been the hottest day of the year with some areas of the country seeing temperatures above 30 degrees. It is, though, the sort of weather that can be dangerous. And now a new campaign has been launched to make sure children are being protected. This summer, thousands of school children are being given free sun cream in an effort to keep them safe. Skin cancer is the fastest growing cancer in the UK and research shows just one bad sunburn as a child can double the risk of cancer in later life. Our reporter, Tim Scott, has more. Do you know what this is? Does anyone know what this is? Sunscreen. Why do we wear sunscreens? While the sun beats down, these children in Kirby are getting a valuable lesson in protecting themselves from getting burned. The cosmetic company behind the session is also handing out Factor 50 sunscreen so the youngsters will stay protected. We've had a great reception and the kids are really excited to be applying sunscreen and also learn about sun safety because that's one of the most important things that they know, you know, there is a risk with the sun and they know how to stay protected, not only just with the sunscreen, but also with the hats, sunglasses. And they've been really excited and receptive of the entire campaign. You have to put sun cream on and some and I get a sun hat and some, some special glasses to make you see. You need some sun hats to keep the sun out of your eyes. You have to wear it every day when it's sunny. And why is that? Or your skin will get burnt. The lesson is part of a UK-wide campaign that will see around 30,000 children receive the free sunscreen. But with summer weather finally here, it's not just children who are being warned about the harmful effects of too much sunshine. This video from Cancer Research UK shows how skin cancer can develop years after the skin has been exposed. Even though your skin may eventually feel and look healed, some cells with damaged DNA can be left behind because our repair mechanisms aren't perfect. Over time, these damaged cells multiply and can develop into skin cancer. And dermatologist Dr Catherine Macbeth from Whiston Hospital has a stark message for those of us planning a tan by sitting out in the sun. There is no safe tan, so, you know, other than the tan that's in a bottle or in a spray. So, you know, all tanning is showing that there is dam damage to your skin. Um, that's your body's protective mechanism really against the damaged rays of the ultraviolet light. So, you know, if you want a, a beach tan, get it from a bottle. Skin cancer is the fastest growing cancer in the UK and research shows that just one blistering sunburn in childhood more than doubles the chances of developing the disease later in life. Young and old alike should heed the advice and be careful in the sun. Tim Scott, ITV News. Uh, how adorable were those kids in uh, Tim's uh, report? Um, let's cross live to uh, Kerry, who's outside for us this evening. Um, so Kerry, is this uh, heat going to stick around? 
Gamal, it has just started to cloud over. Not everybody has seen that sunshine today. I've still got my SPF 50 on. And as you can see, people have been enjoying the warm conditions. But just because the air mass is warm doesn't mean to say that it's that makes it a UV high sunburn risk. It's all to do with the UV sun radiation getting to the ground and also the conditions, the weather conditions. Now, the sun is strong. It's at its highest for longest on Tuesday, the longest day. And with that, we are expecting a little bit more cloud into the weekend and a fresher feel. But that doesn't mean to say that the UV sunburn risk is any less dangerous than it would be across the region today. So that's the thing to watch out for as we head into the weekend. A breeze, a little bit more in the way of cloud. The feel of things it feels cooler. It still could catch you. We'll have the full forecast a little later on in the programme. Look forward to it. OK, Kerry, thank you. Um, in other news today, and the uh, older brother of the Manchester Arena bomber will go on trial over his failure to give evidence of the public inquiry into the attack. 28-year-old Ishmael Abedi, whose whereabouts are unknown, refused to cooperate and fled the country after he was ordered to give evidence by the chairman, Sir John Saunders. The trial will go ahead next month. Next tonight, if you've managed to get to the cinema to see the new Top Gun film, you'll know just how stressful an environment that cockpit can be. Yeah, well, in real life, the next generation of fighter planes are actually being designed right now here in the northwest at BAE Systems in Lancashire. And as part of that design process, they're looking at what cutting-edge technologies they can include, which might help pilots to make those tough decisions. Well, our correspondent, Mel Maverick Barham, was invited to take part in a trial into the use of what they call body haptics to see if they might be part of that game-changing technology. Forget Top Gun, these are the real-life fighter planes currently used by the RAF. But at BAE Systems in Wharton, they're part of a team designing the next generation of combat aircraft, with Tempest set to join the RAF fleet from 2035. And as part of that, they're looking to design the most cutting-edge technology, world-first ideas that could help pilots in the cockpit. So I'm going to be wearing that and then doing a task. So today, I'm going to be a genuine participant in a trial into the use of body haptics. Now, haptics is basically technology that stimulates the senses of touch and motion. This is a haptic vest used a lot in gaming. It vibrates in different areas, meaning it can give physical cues to the wearer. And in the cockpit, it could be a bit like someone tapping you on the shoulder to warn of a danger. I'm going to be wearing it whilst also trying to complete two separate tasks on these tablets. Crucially, the vest is vibrating in a different area each time, giving me extra help with my task. But just how could that be useful in a cockpit? So traditionally, we'd use kind of just a standard audio cue, like an alarm, to, to make you aware of certain things that happen on the aircraft or information you need to know about outside the aircraft. This here is kind of a different channel because it's the touch sensation rather than the auditory channel. We know that the first uh, channel you lose um, in high stress or high workload environments is that auditory thing that gets blocked out. And so tapping into that kind of touch sensation might break through to the, to the user more than just, the, just using an audio cue. Once my training's done and I've completed the control test, it's time to head to the airfield to do it for real. I'm being asked to do the test three times, once with an audio alarm, once with my vest vibrating and then with both the audio and vibrating at the same time. And just to make things more difficult, I'm going to be doing each test once flying straight and then again whilst experiencing 2G in a 60 degree banking turn. That's the equivalent of a roller coaster ride. But whereas on a ride you may experience 2G for just a few seconds, this is a prolonged period of just over two minutes and all the while having to concentrate on the tasks.
look like just a bit of fun, but this is actually going to form part of BAE's analysis into where the haptic technology could be used in this new fighter jet. A genuine trial means a thorough debrief with my findings and thoughts part of that data. And while I'll never know how I did in the task, if haptics makes it into the final design, we'll know it works. Mel Barham, ITV News, Wharton. She gets all the best jobs, doesn't she? She said it might look like fun. I thought it looked terrifying. <laughs> she looked very at home, Maverick did. She did. Uh, on to sport now, and a, a huge moment for women's rugby league. Tomorrow, Warrington's Halliwell Jones Stadium will host England women versus France on the same bill as the men's teams clash with the combined nation's all-stars. The numbers watching and playing women's rugby league are reaching record levels. Chris Hall has been to one grassroots club to find out why. For 35 years, Ashton Bears have sent boys roaring into rugby league, but now the girls are making their mark on this club. I just woke up one day and then my mum went, oh, you, you've been put on the wall at Bears, and then I came down to training, and I was like, wow, that's mad. I definitely think there'll be more, like, TV coverage of the game. There'll be more investment into the sport, so it will become a bigger competition. Um, hopefully we'll see an increase in pay for the women's game. Interest in the women's game is visibly growing. Turn and open your body and point so that you can always see open. Today's guest coach, Jodie Cunningham, last month played in front of a record 6,000 fans as St Helens won the Challenge Cup. Tomorrow she'll share the same televised platform as the men with an England doubleheader in Warrington. It's huge for us. It's the first time there's been any profile or, or visibility for the women who play the game. So we need to make sure that we're keeping people interested. When I first started playing, I had no concept of there being any women's leagues or an England women's team. They can say, I want to play for Saints one day or Wigan or Warrington. You know, I'm jealous. I wish I was their age starting out now. Participation in women's rugby league is up 30% on pre-pandemic levels. Five years ago, this club had a handful of female players. Now they have 85 and with National Lottery funding are building two new pitches to cope with demand. I read somewhere that rugby league's the most watched female sport, um, but obviously participation rates were really low. And I think a lot of that is down to historic misogyny, which a little bit of that was myself. When my daughter said, I want to play rugby league, I was like, no chance, not girls don't play rugby. Uh, and it's about breaking those barriers down. It was my son. He started playing and I was that mum on the sideline screaming and shouting. And he said to me, if you can do better, you go and do it. So I thought, I'll have a go. Does he think you can do better now he's seen you? No, he doesn't. But I think I can. <laughs> Belief is growing at all levels, with Jodie's sights set on lifting the World Cup in November. I'm desperate to get my hands on that trophy, desperate. But more so the bigger picture of what I think that can do for women and girls rugby league. We saw it at the Olympics, we've seen it with rugby union and the success that they have. Netball and the Commonwealth gold. So hopefully we can be the next one to, to ride that wave of success in a World Cup. Next week, Jody leads St Helens into another doubleheader, again sharing the stage with the men in front of the Super League cameras. The landmark moments are coming fast for a sport that will no longer be kept on the touchline. Chris Hall, ITV News, Ashton in Makerfield. Yeah, good luck to all the England women and men, and long may that success continue. In football tonight, Liverpool have agreed a deal to sell Sadio Mane to Bayern Munich. The 30-year-old striker is in the final year of his contract at Anfield and had expressed a desire to leave. He'll cost the Bundesliga champions around £35 million. Michael Appleton has returned to Blackpool for a second spell as manager. Appleton spent 65 days in charge of the club 10 years ago before joining Blackburn Rovers. Today, he's returned to Bloomfield Road on a four-year deal. He replaces Neil Critchley, who has left the club to join Stephen Gerrard's staff at Aston Villa. Now, he wrote that bittersweet ode to growing old, when I'm 64, but Sir Paul McCartney's about to become a fighting fit 80-year-old tomorrow. Yeah, he's even looking forward to playing at the Glastonbury Festival next weekend. Fans in his home city have been marking the milestone in style. A warning that Andy Bonner's report contains flashing images. Happy to celebrate the birthday of a Beatle, what better way than through music? We were really excited to be asked to take part in Paul McCartney's birthday celebrations. 
and the children were really excited when they realised he was a former pupil at our school. It's Paul McCartney's birthday! We're going to Penny Lane to go sing Paul McCartney's happy birthday. He is the one who wrote the Beatles. And he made up Penny Lane. Happy birthday, Sir Paul McCartney. He was one of four lads who shook the world, but now Sir Paul McCartney is about to become an octogenarian. Not that that can stop him. He's even on stage at Glastonbury next week. He is a symbol as much as what those liver birds are, you know, to Liverpool. Tony is a member of the Mersey Beatles, and they've joined Beatles tribute acts from around the world to record their own musical greeting. What did you think when you saw the finished result? Absolutely amazed. You know, maybe I'm amazed, but yeah, honestly, it was a fantastic. It's, you know, it was being edited together greatly, and we're all very proud of it, and we, we hope he enjoys it as well. At the Beatles' story, they're collecting birthday wishes from fans. We've got hundreds of messages coming through. We've got Canada, we've got America, we've got everywhere at the moment. Is Sir Paul actually going to see these messages? Yes, so what we're going to do is create a huge digital birthday card at the end of this, and we're going to send it over to Sir Paul, and we're going to show him his birthday messages. Celebrations are taking place right across Liverpool. Here in Notty Ash, the local bingo hall has even been temporarily renamed. It's now Macca Bingo. And music returned to Paul McCartney's childhood home today. The National Trust offered unsigned acts a chance to play at the place where he penned some of his most famous songs. And a former student from Sir Paul's School for Performing Arts sought his own permission to play as well. I wrote this note, a letter, sent it to Paul via some people at Lipa. And uh, a few weeks later, I got a reply from Paul, like a message from him, saying that uh, thanks you, f thanks for the sweet note, and uh, you have my permission to do the song. So really, he's given you his blessing to be here. How does that feel? Unbelievable. His personal blessing, yeah, which uh, makes it even more special for somebody like me. It is a sign of how highly this city regards Sir Paul McCartney that so much is happening here to celebrate his birthday. Even the road where the Beatles made their name has had a revamp. For the next week, Matthew Street will be known as McCartney Street. And some might even want it to stay that way. Andy Bonner, ITV News, Liverpool. Yeah, get yourself down to Macca Bingo, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Sir Paul. If you've got yeah. any spare tickets for Glastonbury, you know yeah. where to send them. <laughs> you know where to find us. <laughs> uh, well, Macca isn't the only musical superstar being honoured in Liverpool this evening. Let's cross live to the British Music Experience now to join Victoria Grimes. Vicky, people gathering there to celebrate another star man. They certainly are gathering to celebrate another star man. Everyone's made it from Macabingo to the British music experience, including a very special guest today. This is Carlos, and you are the musical director for our legend who is hiding behind this black curtain here. Yes, I uh, was fortunate enough to work with him uh, for about 30 years as his musical director. He co-wrote Fame with him and John Lennon. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work with the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and my friend and associate who is right there waiting for me to unveil. Have you got a little clue for us? Mm, a little clue. Hmm. <laughs> Who can I be now? I think that's something that we should all aspire to. Right then, I think it is time to do the big unveil so that everyone at home can see who it is behind. If you haven't already guessed, which I'm sure you have, who is behind? Carlos, take it away. Here we go. The big moment, folks. What could possibly go wrong at unveil live on telly? Is that yes, thank you, thank you the, the Berlin Wall depicts a moment in time, a transitional figure, and it inspires all of us to think of who can we be now? It's no longer necessary to stay who you are. This man proved it. We all love him because we found a different him every time he came about. Everybody loves a different Bowie. And who can I be now is exactly the way that I live my life, based on this man right now, David Bowie. Amazing, Carlos. Well, step down before I get a crick in my neck, because you're a bit high up there. That's tall. better. I've always wanted to be tall. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us about the David Bowie that you knew and you worked with. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, an important fact that musicians come in all different colors, sizes, and talents. But to be able to have all of them in one room and to be able to get that talent and just get the best out of everybody and also to be able to translate what is happening at the time into a song, well, 
Music is a time capsule. And this man right here can take us back to so many years. He was not a one shot. This man had longevity. And in so doing what he did, he was able to transform not only himself, but many of us into a better person, into a better life, into a better world. And so with all due respect, I am honored to be able to unveil my friend and collaborator, David Bowie. Uh, and we're so lucky to have you here in Liverpool. Such an amazing day for Thank the city. You. Thank you, Carlos. Very, very quickly on to Harry Doyle now from the council. Some other big news for Liverpool today, very quickly. Yeah, well, of course, we are a city of music. We're a UNESCO city of music. We're very proud of our musical heritage. Today, we heard that the Eurovision, Eurovision Song Contest will come to the UK. Liverpool is standing by ready to host uh, the Song Contest next year. We're very proud of our, of our sister city of Odessa, of Ukraine. We want to do them proud. Uh, and we really want to have an impact next year uh, to give Ukraine a platform in our schools, in our communities, here in the city. Amazing stuff, Harry. Thank you so much. Well, let's hope that happens because I'm a massive of Eurasian fan. I'm going to put a call into the boss now. Please, can I cover that if it happens? We are moving on to more musical legends tonight. They are the K's. They are from St. Helens. They're going to follow in the footsteps of Bowie and of Maka and of all those other greats with their new single, which is out now. They're currently on the Isle of Wight, taking the festival there by storm, and they're doing a whole host of festivals across the summer, as Elaine Wilcox has been finding out. The K's have toured with James and the DMAs and have sold out their own headline gigs. Out of in your face, punky, indie, poppy. We just mix all the best bits from all together and it seems to work for us. So you two, Jamie and Dexter, met at nursery, so go back a long way. Been friends <laughs> since we was about, what, three? Yeah. But the K's was born when you, Ryan and Jordan joined. Mm. I brought all the good bits, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Massive guitar riffs, innit? Yeah, it? just think yeah, the guitar it. side of it and Jordan as well, equally, on the drums. And their music reflects their varied influences. I'm mad into the jam and stuff like that, but you're into like sort of like, rockier yeah, side. Yeah, like the you? Stones and like Keith Richards and Chuck Berry and all that. I just sort of grew up. That's why I started playing guitar. And then uh, Dexter came in with the Spice Girls and things like that. <laughs> yeah, loved it, loved it. I'm quite into like hip hop and dance music as well, yeah, so you've yeah. got that side of it. Bringing the funk. Well. Bringing the funk. Well, <laughs> the thing is, you don't, you don't hear the bass, you feel it, don't you? So. <laughs> Hometown is their latest release, fiercely proud of where they're from, smack in the middle of Manchester and Liverpool. Earlstown's always been known for its famous nine arches. It was one of the first viaducts <laughs> built of its kind, built between 1828 and 1830. <laughs> Dummy research, mate, professional. <laughs> With a growing fan base, they're leaving the arches behind as Europe beckons. Go out to Stockholm, we play in Athens, we play in Spain, we play in Portugal, we play out we play everywhere, including like Isle of Wight, Kendall Corley, Reading and Leeds as well. We've got Reading there. and Leeds, we're, we're just everywhere, but that's what we like, we love it. You've all got interest in day jobs. You're a mental health nurse, you work with naughty kids, <laughs> you're a surveyor. But you, how difficult is it as a self-financing band? After Covid, you're basically starting from zero, but we already had a bit of a name for ourselves. So the venues are playing and we're all up and down the country straight away, but we've not had any money for two years, so it's really difficult. Now in talks with the label, with an album next, the K's are creating waves. Going up and down the country and people singing the lyrics back to you, it's just a little bit, it's mad really, you know, to know that poor yeah. lads from Earlstown are, creating such a, a wave going, across the country. Uh, great music, great weather. What more do you need for a Friday night? Well, we may need to make the most of it while it's still here. Let's cross back to Kerry now, who's still baking away outside on the waterfront. Kerry, have you been feeling the heat out there? 
Oh, it's just started, Anne, to cool down. It has been exceptionally hot for that southern half of our region today. Highs, wait for it, 29.8 Celsius in Nantwich. That is unusually, I'd want to say exceptionally high for the time of year, for this time in June. have been looking back at the archives, and there's just a handful of occasions where we've got to 30 degrees this time in June or for the second half of June. And four of those occasions, four of those occasions have been in the last six years. So it's this heat rising quite quickly over a very small number of days and getting this intense heat so uh, whether you like it or not it's probably here to stay as in we're going to get more of this as the years progress but you might be getting a shock to the system as we head into tomorrow because it is going to feel a lot fresher here's your forecast that sunshine really made your eyeshadow pop you know and you put the wipe in the bin not the toilet United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Go ahead, Queen. So for many parts of the northwest today, especially central and southern parts, a very pleasant day. Whether you're at the coast, looking across the Mersey, or a little warmer inland with that summer greenery, it has felt very, very warm. Definitely fresher into the weekend by a good 10 to 12 degrees across many parts of the northwest. It will be mostly dry, there will be some sunshine around, but we could see a few showers pushing in from the south during the second half of tomorrow and into tomorrow night. So in a bit more detail, this was the story today. That searing heat developing from the southeast during the morning and through into the early part of the afternoon before that weather front to the northwest took over and pushed its way south and eastwards and turned things a bit more unsettled for the Isle of Man and parts of Cumbria with a dip in temperatures here. So as we head through into this evening, we see that weather front fizzling out. Not much rain on as, as it pushes into parts of Cheshire, but it will push across all parts of the region, bringing cloudy skies, misty and murky conditions, and temperatures not as mild and muggy as last night. In fact, down into single figures under the clearest skies in the north by dawn. So there are your sun times as we head into the weekend. Definitely a fresher start tomorrow, a mostly dry day. There will be some cloud around and we do look to the south for that front re-emerging from southern parts as we head into the afternoon evening. And we could see some rain here as we head through into the latter part of the day. Temperature wise, very different, but actually not too short of the average for the time of year. As we head into Sunday, we are expecting it to be a mostly dry day. Most of the showers staying much further south, temperature-wise around average, but with a fresher northerly airflow. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Those eyebrows are unreal. Hello, Summer. Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. So despite the fresher feel over the next few days, that's not necessarily good news for hay fever sufferers. A lot of dry and bright weather to come, a little bit of a breeze mixing the pollen around. So it's high during the course of the weekend. And as a nice day is expected on Monday, it could even be very high. Take care. See you soon. Thanks, Kerry. You can come back to the aircon in the office now. <laughs> on our website, you can see how the staff at Manchester's Donkey Sanctuary have been keeping their residents cool. Here's a clue. Giant ice pops. Ooh, giant ice pops. That <laughs> sounds awesome. Uh, have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>